Each one of these murders was a deliberate and planned act. Therefore, this panel finds that the death penalty is appropriate, should be, and is hereby given for each of the four murders by the defendant. Get This is Austin Myers, a murder suspect in Ohio. So I start to freak out. I'm just like, shit, this isn't going as planned. I don't know if it's too late to fucking take it back. And I don't know what else to do. I pulled out my knife because it was right here in my pocket. I had my cargo shorts on and I start stabbing him in the back. On January 28th, 2014, Austin Myers and Timothy Mosley robbed and killed Justin back at his house in Waynesville, Warren County, Ohio. Justin's stepfather, Mark Cates, found their house in a mess and called 911. My safe is gone. My, my handgun that was on top of the safe is gone. Watches, looks like it was a wreck. As per reports, Myers held Justin while Mosley tried to strangle him with a makeshift Garrett. As the Navy recruit resisted the duo, Mosley panicked. The plan was, could no blood. Right. I got him, like, right on the chin. So I start to freak out. I'm just like, this isn't going as planned. I don't know if it's too late to take it back. Right. And in desperation, Mosley stabbed Justin from behind. It never felt like you hit bone or anything like where it was tough. It just it really was in and out. Really? Uh, I had enough time. I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly. No. Justin was stabbed a total of 21 times. During their interrogation, Myers tried to blame Mosley for the stabbing. Did you ever ask him why this suddenly happened? I didn't want to try to talk about it. Because he just killed one of my old friends in front of me, and he had a gun in his pocket, right. and I don't know why. I don't know why he killed him in the first place. Mosley, on the other hand, claimed that Myers was the mastermind of the murder robbery. After hearing him trying to sell me out and make me look like I did everything, how would I know about the safe? How would I know about the money? Why would I put something in cold blood? And he told me about it. What did he tell you? What? He told me about uh, Justin's house and his stepdad, saying he has a safe, he keeps it cracked open and he has a gun and a lot of money. How Austin, much money did you think was going to be there? Austin said a good couple thousand. So we were thinking, a quick job, in and out, boom, about make some money. And then we uh, came up with the plan uh, of taking out Justin, because in the way. So he's the brains of the operation. <laughs> pretty much, I was, I was following You're the him. muscle. After the murder, they wrapped Justin's body in a blanket and dumped it in a rural area. Myers fired two shots into the body. He says you're the one that pulled the trigger on the gun, and he's already dead. I mean, all I want to know is, I want to know the truth. And he says you shot him, and he's very convincing. Did you shoot the gun, or did he? After being arrested and charged in court, Mosley reached a plea agreement in which he agreed to testify against Myers. He told the court about Justin's final moments. Uh, obviously, Justin was trying to put up a fight, and just he wasn't overpowering us. Uh, Justin was trying to ask ask us why. To, he was clean to stop, pretty much begging for his life. What did Austin say in response to these questions and statements that Justin Back is making as he's attempting to kill him? In the, in the lines of, it's all right, um, it's almost over. He then said that Myers wrote the plan to murder Justin in a notebook, which was presented in court. Uh, no mess. What's the significance of that? What did that mean? Um, the idea of strangling them, uh, that way it would create no mess, uh, pretty much be an easier job to handle. The defense argued that it was Mosley who had planned the murder and took the plea deal by falsely testifying against Myers. Timmy's got a reason to lie. You heard about the plea agreement, contract. Timmy has a reason to save his own skin at this point. Justin's parents didn't hold back in court when they appeared before Myers. Austin could have stopped it, but tells Justin, it's okay, it's almost over. You could have changed your mind many times, but you didn't, especially when Justin was begging for his life. I'm gonna stand up here and tell you how much I hate you. That is without question. I would just hope that every time you close your eyes at night, you see my just my son Justin. Before his sentencing, Myers took to the stands. He addressed the victim's parents. I'm sorry that this happened. Now, I know that doesn't bring Justin back, but I'm sorry. He apologized and said he regrets killing Justin back. I hate for any family to go through such pain and suffering as this. Myers then asked the jurors to spare his life for his family's sake. If you choose for me to die, it's only gonna cause more pain and suffering for another family. 
Not me. It won't hurt me. I won't feel anything. It's gonna hurt more innocent people. Now, this is the moment the 19-year-old will learn his fate. The defendant does not understand how precious life is. The court finds that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstance outweighs the mitigating factor. Therefore, the sentence of death shall be imposed upon Austin Gregory Myers on the charge of aggravated murder. Myers was found guilty of all charges and was sentenced to death. He is the youngest person on Ohio's death row. While Austin Myers was sent to death row for killing his best friend, how does it compare to murdering a mother and her daughter? Like in the case of Marlon Joseph, a double murder suspect in Florida. Murdering uh, a mother in the presence of her own child and then chasing that child out in the street like a dog and shooting her five times. On December 28, 2017, Joseph shot and killed Kalada Crowell and her 11-year-old daughter Kyra Inglet in their home after a dispute between his daughter and Kyra. According to police reports, Joseph first shot Crowell in the head and then chased and shot Kyra five times. Joseph then went on the run for five days. His mother pleaded with him to turn himself in. Son, I love you. You know I love you, but can you please just turn yourself in? Joseph was soon arrested from a nearby apartment complex. Legal analysts called it a particularly heinous crime and that Marlon Joseph deserved the death penalty. Murdering uh, a mother in the presence of her own child and then chasing that child out in the street like a dog and shooting her five times, I believe it was three shots in the head. Um, those are gruesome facts and you know when you commit an offense like that you are the poster child for the death penalty now it was time for marlon to learn his fate marlon maurice joseph you have not only forfeited your right to live among us but under this laws of the state of florida you have forfeited your right to live at all Sorry. joseph was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to death and on that date you shall be executed in a method provided by florida law while marlon joseph was sent to death row for killing a mother and her daughter how does it compare to targeting and murdering two people at random like in the case of dexter johnson a robbery and murder suspect in texas according to reports Johnson was part of a group of five who randomly targeted Maria Aparici and Hui Ngo, who were sitting in their car outside Aparici's house in Houston. Johnson and his accomplices forced the couple into the back seat of their car and drove them to a secluded area where they robbed them of their belongings. Johnson then assaulted Aparici in front of Ngo before shooting them both in the head. Johnson was arrested a few days later after police traced the stolen car and found DNA evidence linking him to the crime. He faced charges of two counts of capital murder, carjacking, robbery, and unlawful intercourse with the potential for the death penalty. Dexter Darnell Johnson, the jury has found you guilty of capital murder. In accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, this court hereby says it's your punishment at death. After the verdict, Johnson was visibly distraught, and his family, sitting in the gallery, broke down. Suddenly, Johnson sprang from his seat and lunged towards the victim's family before being quickly surrounded by officers. He was restrained and removed from the court. Johnson was 18 when he was sentenced to death. 13 years later in 2019, a federal court halted the execution of Johnson, citing him being intellectually disabled and therefore ineligible for the death penalty. While Dexter Johnson was sent to death row for his mindless double murder, how does it compare to killing a friend in the pretense of sneaking out? Like in the case of Aiden Fucci, a murder suspect in Florida. What's going on? Why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? As per reports, Aiden Fucci stabbed and killed his 13-year-old classmate Tristan Bailey in a wooded area near their homes in Bailey, Florida. CCTV footage showed that Tristan was last seen with Fucci on the night of her murder. Show the two subjects walking from top left to the top right, and they're traveling in a direction east towards the cul-de-sac of Saddlestone. Later that night, Fucci was caught on camera running away from the area where he and Tristan had gone a few hours ago. <clears throat> You can see that he's carrying something in his hands.
Kristen was reported missing by her family, and hours later, her body was discovered with 114 stab wounds. Fucci was arrested in relation to the then-missing case of Tristan. He posted on Snapchat while sitting in the back of the cop car. He even took a video on his phone. We're, we're having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... In custody, Fucci was grilled by his parents. That uh, Snapchat that you did was not very smart. Not going to burn that. We have people on the burner house, not in our car stuff. Because of that Snapchat thing you did. It's all over. You're all over the internet everywhere. Social media. It's on social media. You'll probably come stay with me after we get done with this. Just for your well-safe being. This is seriously. Later, Fuji's mother was caught on camera trying to clean the blood out of the jeans he was wearing during the murder. She was later charged with tampering with evidence. Fuji was charged with first-degree murder. Later, in a court appearance, Fucci seemed confused and disoriented. What the going on? Oh, I hate you demons. You demons want to take my soul away. I don't let you demons steal my soul. Fucci pleaded guilty to all charges and apologized to the victim's family. I just want to say I plead out guilty. Uh, and I'm sorry for the Bailey family and my family. Tristan's sister appeared in court and made powerful victim impact statements. This jar now holds 114 stones, one for each of the 114 stab wounds that my sister had to endure. Did she see you coming at her with the knife or did you stab her while she wasn't paying attention? Did she scream out for help or was she para paralyzed with agony? Did she cry for my mother? Did she beg you to stop? Did you hear her lungs gargling with blood? Or did you see it in her face when she realized she could no longer breathe due to her collapsed lungs? What were her last words? Did you stay to watch her die? Or did you leave her there in agonizing pain as you ran away? How long did she suffer? Did you watch the life leave her eyes? Tristan's mother said that she would never forgive Fuji. Aiden Fuji, you have destroyed me. You have destroyed my family. You have destroyed Tristan's friends. You have de destroyed the community that we live in. You have caused a divide amongst friends and neighbors. That should have never been. During the verdict, the judge said that this was probably the most shocking case of his career. I would submit that this case is probably the most difficult and shocking case that this county in St. John's County has, has dealt with. In the 20 years that I have been, or 16 years that I have been practicing law, and the 30 years that I have lived and worked in this all of Northeast Florida, this case is, is one of only a very small few that had this level and this type of impact on the... He said that Tristan was conscious and aware during her attack. 114 stab wounds. 49 defensive wounds, 35 wounds to the head and neck, 29 to the back and shoulder, and six fatal wounds. The judge added that the crime was highly premeditated and the future was always going to kill someone. There was a heightened level of premeditation in this case. Based on the prior statements that he made to his girlfriend and his friend, he indicated that he was going to kill someone. At which point he determined that it was going to be Tristan Bailey I don't know, but there was going to be a victim. The judge also said that this crime had no reason. He added that Fuji killed Tristan only to satisfy his desire to see what it was like to kill someone. Also very troubling is that this crime had no motive. This was not done out of, out of greed. It was not done in retaliation, retribution, or revenge. It was not a crime of passion. It was not a crime that was committed because he felt rejected by her. It was not done in, an, in a fit of uncontrollable anger. There was no reason. There was no purpose. It was done for no other reason than to satisfy this defendant's internal desire to feel what it was like to kill someone. Fucci was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He was just 14 years old. Mr. Fucci, having entered a plea of guilty to the crime of first degree murder, I adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Tristan Bailey. I sentence you to life in prison. While Aiden Fucci was sent to life in prison for brutally murdering his friend, how does it compare to committing multiple murders in a place where people go to study? Like in the case of 24-year-old Nicholas Cruz, a mass murder suspect in Florida. Hello. My name is Nick, and I'm going to be in the next school shooter of 2018. 
Location is Stone Douglas in Parkland, Florida. It's gonna be a big event. And when you see me on the news, you'll all know who I am. <laughs> You're all going to die. Crews shot and killed 17 people and wounded 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Before the tragic incident, Cruz made several videos of himself revealing his plans. And we'll all die. Alright, so here's the plan. I'm going to go take an Uber in the afternoon before 2.40. From there, I'll go into the to school campus, walk up the stairs, load my bags, shoot people down at the main, was it the main courtyard, await, and people will die. Days before the attack, Cruz was caught practicing shooting in his backyard. During the attack, students and staff hid in corners and cupboards to avoid being shot. The staff and students who survived the massacre did so by hiding in corners and cupboards. Cookery teacher Ashley Kurth had nearly 70 children in her classroom while the shooting went on in the corridor. Just minutes after the shooting, crews can be seen calmly ordering an icy from a subway nearby. Next, he went into a McDonald's and asked a traumatized student for a ride home. Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder. What's going on? What's going on today, bro? Uh, the de demons, man. Demons? Voices. Voices. Voice voices and demons? Where's the voices? During his trial, Cruz told a state psychiatrist that he hoped one of the students would come up and hug him while he was shooting other people. Uh, at one point in the interview, he suggested that, uh, you know, maybe uh, he had hoped one would hug him. He also suggested at one point that uh, he understood that they might have fear uh, or run from him. Cruz also said that he hoped his victims would scream more instead of just passing out. I thought they would scream. Uh -huh. That's more like they... Passed out. Okay. Passed out and just blood just came out pouring out of their head. Okay. It was really nasty. A victim's father said that he sat with his attorneys and saw the video of Cruz killing his daughter. And I sat with attorney Sats and I watched you kill my daughter on video. A teacher who survived the shooting called Cruz a monster and wished he died sooner than later. You don't know me, but you tried to kill me. I will have a scar on my arm in the memory of you pointing your gun at me, ingrained in my brain forever. I see you in my nightmares and in my daydreams, and not a day goes by that I don't think about that horrible day. Because of you, I check for all exits wherever I am. Because of you, I think of the worst case scenario for myself and my family. Because of you, I will never feel safe again. I have no forgiveness in my heart for you. You are a monster with no remorse, and every breath you take is a breath wasted. The father of a teacher who died in the shooting spoke to Cruz and said that he hopes he dies a painful death in prison. My hope, my prayer for my birthday present is to get word that you are dead, that criminal, that the justice system was done in jail, that the prisoners that you and inmates that you have to associate with executed the judgment that this court can't. And I hope that it's the most painful judgment ever. Cruz was found guilty of all 34 charges. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count one of the indictment, the murder in the first degree of Luke Hoyer. The court imposes a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count 34 for the attempted murder in the first degree of Kyle Lamont. The court imposes a life sentence with a minimum mandatory of life in prison under Florida's 1020 life statute. Again, I am ordering that all 34 counts of the indictment for each sentence is to run consecutive. 
That is one after another. You are remanded to the custody of the Department of Corrections to complete the mandatory life sentences imposed by the court. The victim's families were outraged by the decision to spare Cruz from the death penalty. Today, the wrong verdict was given. We are beyond disappointed with the outcome today. I'm stunned. I'm devastated. Nicholas Cruz was sent to life in prison for mass murder. What happens when you're accused of killing a cop? Like in the case of 16-year-old Jonathan Belton, who was convicted of murdering a cop in Detroit. We know what really happened. I know what really happened. The Lord know what really happened. I love you all to death. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see you all soon. As per reports, Belton was driving without a license when Officer Mason Samborski pulled him over on a routine stop. Belton then lied and took Samborski to a nearby apartment complex to meet his mother. Once there, Belton tried to flee and a struggle ensued. Belton shot Officer Samborski and killed him with his own service gun. First responders said that Officer Samborski had no pulse by the time they arrived. He also had a wound in the back of his head. I checked for vitals first. Uh, I found no pulse. Uh, there was a large wound in the back of his head. The prosecutor said that Belton had intended to harm and kill Officer Samborski. The defendant either intended to kill Officer Samborski, intended to do great bodily harm to Officer Samborski, or knowingly created a very high risk of death or great bodily harm. Belton's girlfriend, who was present during the crime, took the stand and described what happened after she heard the gunshot. Johnny with the gun in his hand, is that Jonathan Belton? Yes. When you saw the defendant Jonathan Belton with the gun in his right hand, could you tell which, who, where it was pointed towards? Yes. Could you tell the jury where the defendant Belton had the handgun? It was pointed towards his upper body, somewhere towards his head. Speaking to Belton, Officer Samborski's widow said that she would never forgive him. Jonathan Belton. You shattered my happiness, my hopes, and my dreams, and for that I will never forgive you. Belton was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He was 16 years old. Murder of a peace officer, guilty as charged of murder of a peace officer. Count two, possession of firearm and the commission of a felony. However, his sentence was later reduced to 40 to 70 years in prison due to a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that made mandatory life sentences for juveniles unconstitutional. Jonathan Belton was sent to life in prison for killing a cop. But what happens when you're accused of assaulting your date? Like in the case of 17-year-old Keandra Cook, a carjacking and assault suspect in Daytona, Florida. According to reports, Cook used an online dating app to lure the victims and set them up for a carjacking. During the attempt, one of the victims was allegedly shot and seriously wounded. In addition to carjacking, Cook was charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Before the verdict, the judge allowed her to say her final words. All right, come on up, Miss Cook. You get to say the final words. Now Cook would learn her sentence. Ms. Cook, you're before the court for sentencing. A couple of things uh, going in your favor. One, you didn't hold the firearm during this episode. The, the second is that um, the victim uh, luckily survived. That being said, this was uh, intentional. There was an orchestrated ambush, and you are a main part of that. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and adjudicate you guilty of all three charges, sentence you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> Cook and her mother broke down in court. It was a sentence much more severe than they expected. The judge said that Cook's actions were pre-planned and orchestrated, 
and sentenced her to 20 years in prison. Cook later withdrew her plea and entered a new one after claiming that her previous attorney misled her about the possible sentence. She received a reduced sentence of 11 years in prison and 20 years of probation. While Keandra Cook lured her victims to rob them and received 20 years in prison, our next accused ended two lives by intentionally crashing her car. This is 18-year-old Mackenzie Sharilla, a double murder suspect in Strongsville, Ohio. I'm not even cool. I'm just one of those girls that can do a lot of drugs and not die. As per reports, Sharilla killed her boyfriend, 20-year-old Dominic Russo, and his friend, 19-year-old Davian Flanagan, by intentionally crashing their car into a building at 100 miles per hour. The impact was so severe that the car was split in half and the trio were all ejected from the car. Sharilla was the only survivor of the crash. She pleaded not guilty to the charges against her and asked for leniency from the judge. However, the evidence showed that Sharilla had deliberately crashed the car as she pressed the gas pedal all the way down and never applied the brakes. Mackenzie alone decided to push the pedal to the floor and demand the ultimate speed of that vehicle to 90 to 100 miles per hour. Addressing the crash video, the judge said that Sharilla's actions were intentional and she was aware of what she was doing. Clearly shows the purpose and intent of the defendant. She chose a course of death and destruction that day. The judge then said that Sharilla wanted to kill Russo and Flanagan, and perhaps herself too, in the crash. Acted purposely and intentionally. In the early morning hours of July 31st, 2022, her purpose was to kill Dominic Russo and the family. She intended to also kill herself as a matter of speculation and have no relevance to the weighing of the evidence in this case. During the victim impact statements, Flanagan's mother said she would pray for Sharilla to find true remorse and repentance. I also pray that Mackenzie will find true remorse in her heart and true repentance. Flanagan's sister asked the judge to give Sharilla the longest possible sentence. I would like you to give Mackenzie the longest possible sentence. I've known her for about three years and as she, she's always taken the easy way out. You should, she will be eligible for parole while my brother will be gone forever. Russo's brother said that Sharilla was the most selfish he knew. Kenzie's statement in the hospital to Detective Azu, can't you just take my license away for 10 years or something? That statement is Mackenzie Cirillo, the most selfish person I know. Ironically, Dom was the most selfless person I know. A visibly distraught Cirillo addressed the court and apologized to her and the victim's family. Davia, I'm so deeply sorry. I hope one day you can see I would never let this happen or do it on purpose. I wish I could remember what happened. I'm just so sorry. I'm heartbroken. I love Dom and Davia. We were all friends and Dom was my soulmate. I wish I could take all your pain away. I'm so sorry. And to my family, thank you for the support and all the love you guys give. Thank you for fighting with me. I love you all so much. I'm done. Thank you. Sharilla was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. While Mackenzie Sharilla was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison for intentionally crashing and killing her boyfriend and their friend, how does it compare to murdering your little neighbor? Like in the case of 18-year-old Alyssa Bustamante, a murder suspect in Missouri. According to reports, Alyssa lured 9-year-old Elizabeth Olton into the woods and strangled, stabbed, and injured her throat. She then buried her body in a pre-dug grave and wrote in her journal that it was amazing and enjoyable to kill someone. During interrogation, Alyssa confessed to murdering Olton. Because I am your advocate and I am here to protect you, I, I'm not going to ask them questions, but their statements that you're making don't make sense. It's everything that you're lying. And, and we treat people who can't be honest completely different than we treat people who can be honest. If you can be honest, if you can tell us what happened, even if you aren't protecting people you feel obligated to protect, we at least know we can help you, okay? So he's going to walk out, and like he said, he can't come back and talk, but don't you want to have told him the truth right from the beginning? This is your opportunity. It's your opportunity. Okay. Put it. Split her throat. I strangled her. <laughs> She said that she strangled Olton first and then injured her throat with a knife and finally stabbed and buried her body. And then you slit her throat? Mm -hmm. And did you actually, did you stab her then? Mm -hmm. Did you do anything else to her? Okay. Alyssa said that she wanted to know what it felt like to kill someone. 
Even after her confession, Alyssa initially pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder. She then took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of second-degree murder. Basically, the main reason for accepting the offer was to avoid the absolute certainty of life without parole. If there was another option, then there would have been no reason to have accepted that offer. Alyssa Bustamante was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of conditional release in 2024 plus a consecutive sentence of 30 years. While Bustamante will spend the rest of her life in prison, how will it compare to the case of five students who mindlessly killed a person over a prank? This is McCaden Payne, Trevor Gray, Alexander Miller, Mark Sikelski, and Kyle Anger, five teenage murder suspects in Michigan. The five students from Clio, Michigan were playing a game called Overpassing, they threw rocks and sandbags from highway overpasses and scored points for hitting cars. As per reports, on the night of October 18, 2017, 17-year-old Kyle Anger threw a rock weighing six pounds that crashed through the windshield of a van and killed 32-year-old Kenneth White. The teens were charged with second-degree murder. It's not a prank, it's second-degree murder. I don't think anybody's laughing, and I think if there's any admonition, any warning that both David and I can give, it's telling young people that you make a bad decision, you could be spending the rest of your life in prison. The judge declared that the teens would be tried as adults since they showed no remorse after killing Kenneth White. The proposal for juvenile sentencing is rejected. Lay low for a while and everything will be fine. Only way you get in trouble is if a and I won't say the word spelled rats. So you better hope he didn't give in already or else we're going to the slammer. White's mom spoke to the five teens and said that they had destroyed her life and her family's life. You have destroyed all my life. Or his life, you destroyed mine and my family, and his family, his kids. And yet you still have not even said you sorry for what you've done with Sadie. No remorse whatsoever. My heart breaks and aches every single day since his life has been taken from me. Kyle Anger threw the stone that killed Kenneth, apologized to the victim's family. I wake up every day with the hurt, sadness from my actions. Yes, it was never meant to talk to me. I didn't think about what my actions could do, and I will have to live with remorse and guilt for the rest of my life. I have a two-year-old niece, Melanie, and I look back and think, what if she had to grow up without a parent? And the thought tears me up. In time, I can only hope that Mr. White's family and the community will be able to forgive me for my actions. Four of the five teenagers later pleaded guilty to manslaughter and were sentenced to juvenile detention. At the same time, Kyle Anger, who did not accept a plea deal, was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to three to 20 years in prison. He was paroled after three and a half years. 